All roads lead to the sequel trilogy. This is a claim I've heard a great many times from various friends and other YouTubers out there, which is one I frankly completely understand and certainly could be plausible still even at this point. But then I have to ask the question, what does that actually mean? Everybody has a different vision of what that could portend, what that could entail. I did a video almost a year ago now, one of the very first ones I ever did on YouTube, and I talked about my hypothesis on where this could go from here. Because, you know, what we do on this channel, as we've said a great many times, is that we try to put Hollywood and the entertainment industry through the business and financial lens of reality. Well, we're going to continue to try to do that here, trying to take some of the fandom out of things sometimes and just look at the business metrics. Now, today we're going to talk about episode six of the book of Boba Fett. Now, a lot has been talked about in these last couple of weeks since the fifth and sixth episodes have come out. And the conversation that you're about to see with Cameron Pasha and myself was actually shot several days ago. Due to other prior commitments, I just have not had the time to get this out until today here on Saturday. But uh, I want to thank everybody on that note for coming out Thursday night for our first anniversary party, our live stream that we did. Uh, the support was amazing, and I can't thank everyone enough. But that being said, we still need to get back to the conversation at hand because, of course, Star Wars is a hot topic. It's a passionate topic of mine. It's a passionate topic for so many people out there watching this channel and so many others on YouTube, so many great YouTubers, many that are just completely disheartened with where Star Wars has gone and have completely checked out, which, again, I completely understand. As I've been saying to so many friends out there, hey, look, it's not your fault. Disney broke it. It's not your fault for not liking it anymore. That being said, I am always, I am always looking at the old immutable truth of follow the money. Now, when we talk about the sequel trilogies, when we talk about things that we're seeing in these episodes, particularly in this past week, we saw Luke's Jedi Temple, uh, Luke's Jedi Training Academy being built that bore a striking resemblance to the scenes that we saw in the sequel trilogy. I get it. And some people, that freaks them out. But things like that, to me, the, the, the basic elements don't really give me much pause. That's not what I'm concerned about with this sequel trilogy. We're going to talk about the things that we are really concerned about the sequel trilogy in this video today. So as we go forward, just keep asking yourself as you see certain things pop up, whether it be in Book of Boba Fett, Mando Season 3, The Ahsoka Show, Obi-Wan, all this kind of stuff, ask yourself, why is it there? There is another immutable truth, and that is that Disney has spent over $1 billion building out two Star Wars Galaxy's Edge theme parks, have they not? And what is the central focus of those theme parks, be they good or ill? Batu. Batu is another thing I fully expect to see brought into the fray at some point in these shows on Disney+. Plus. Don't be surprised and then don't immediately react and say, oh, there we go. We're going right to the sequel trilogies and all the events therein, including the deconstruction of Luke, Han Solo being a deadbeat dad, uh, the, the, the undoing of the Skywalker legacy from the original film, so on and so forth. Just because we see certain things does not mean that everything else will follow suit. Now, I'm not trying to tell you that everything will be undone. Absolutely. And I'm not trying to tell you that everything is going to proceed straight into the sequel trilogies as they are. What I am trying to convey is that it's a little early in the game for everybody to try to hone in on confirmation bias. Take a step back, chill out, let things play out. And again, I understand because I have a lot of friends that have checked out of Star Wars that were huge and still are huge Star Wars fans. And just because you have chosen not to engage in the current Disney Star Wars does not make you less of a Star Wars fan. Just because you choose to watch the current Disney Star Wars stuff and you get excited by things like seeing Luke uh, and Grogu and things like this that we're getting in these, these television shows on Disney+, Plus, that does not make you less of a Star Wars fan either. And Cameron will use a word today like binary. We need to get away from that in terms of the fandom. It's okay. Everybody is going to enjoy what they're going to enjoy, and we just want to encourage everybody to have a little bit 
calmer dialogue out there on YouTube, on Twitter, and places like that to where, hey, look, let people like what they're going to like. It's okay. At the end of the day, everybody is going to enjoy the brand of Star Wars that they do. But if Disney is going to really pull the money trigger, if Disney is going to really try to maximize their return on investment, because the business and financial side here is what we look at, we know what that is. It is indisputable what happened with the sequel trilogies in terms of revenues and returns as they progress those five films in the theater. We have talked about this on this channel at length. So if Disney really wants to get back to making the most money possible, which I promise you they do, then it portends more of a lean away from the films that we have gotten to this point, the sequel trilogies in particular. So stay tuned. And here comes the conversation with Cameron and I. It's good to see everybody here today. Take care. And here we go. Gross Edge says it's an incredible episode. Uh, it's even better than the previous one, which I blew me away. And this blew me away a whole other level. As I wrote on my Patreon, this episode of the Book of Boba Fett, and one could argue whether it's even Book of Boba Fett, and it doesn't matter, as I said in my Patreon, this episode of Star Wars, this mm -hmm. episode of Star Wars, it gave me more than I knew I wanted. It gave me more than I thought was possible, and it gave me more than I than I knew I wanted. It was like a magical genie appearing from a lamp, giving you your, your innermost wishes that you didn't even know about, right? So it is masterful storytelling. It's masterful writing. With that in mind, now that we have seen that masterful writing is very much in the cards and a possibility on the show, the idea that someone like Jean Favreau, Dave Filoni, who are capable of masterful storytelling will then lead us to disappointing storytelling seems improbable. And we can talk about why there was some disappointment. We'll talk about it a little bit later why there was some disappointment with the earlier parts of the show. But compared to The Mandalorian, which was largely masterful storytelling, and now we're seeing masterful storytelling in this series, it seems very improbable to me as a screenwriter, someone does this professionally, that someone with that level of craft that we saw last night will be like, oh, I'm just going to have this whole series end in a disastrous sequel finale, the, you know, sequel trilogy where the, most of the audience doesn't want and, and people didn't buy toys for. That's where I'm going to go with that because I don't, uh, with my genius, I can't find a way out of that, right? So, so that seems to me an improbable future sequence of events. But so let's look at this, what this means first from a storytelling perspective. The ending of an episode with a cliffhanger like this, which is you choose the red pill or choose the blue pill, you choose a lightsaber or you choose the armor, right? That's classic archetypal storytelling. It is meant to drag in the audience, to agitate the audience and make them nervous in the way that we are seeing in the online discussions. It's intended to have you all arguing about it in the same way that who shot JR for another generation. That's what I was, I was thinking of that cliffhanger from Dallas. Yeah. <laughs> for a year, for one year, that was the national conversation. Who shot JR? Everyone waited to find out for the show, Dallas, to come back to find out who shot JR. And then it was a little bit of an anticlimax, who shot it. But it was the engagement that, that pulled it, that shot up Dallas's ratings. Quantity. It was huge. Yeah. So, oh. so this is good storytelling. This is good business because now everyone is engaged. What happens now? And everyone's arguing over it, right? Okay. That's a good thing because now everyone cares. And, it's, and that's what you want as a storyteller. You want people hanging on to what happens next. And if I were him, I would probably not answer that question next week because, you know, we do have theoretically a show called the Book of Boba Fett. We might want to go back to Boba Fett for a bit and, and conclude that arc, right? And so we'll talk about that. But it's, but so, but with that side, now let's say, so you have this, you have this choice. And people are reading the choice to be that if, and we're going to give some spoilers here, so I hope you have watched the show. Don't watch it and uh, mm -hmm. stop now. Go watch the show. Come back and hear here. But here's the spoiler. So this, the choice that is presented is will Grogu choose Yoda's lightsaber, which will make him officially Luke's uh, student in the new Jedi Academy that he is creating on this planet, right? Mm -hmm. um, and if he does so, that many would argue, alters the timeline of what we have been told was the timeline in the Disney Star Wars world, which is that Ben Solo was allegedly the first formal student of Luke Skywalker. So if Grogu becomes the first official student, then the timeline does not jibe. So 
sounds like they've jettisoned the other storyline, right? But then people are concerned. Well, then it doesn't jive. So if he comes back and makes a choice, I'm choosing the armor, which will allow me to go back to my father figure, the Mandalorian, Din Djarin, then I guess that means the only outcome of that is John Favreau has embraced the final version of the story where Luke Skywalker is an angry old hermit who abandons his family and dies alone. On a I mean, that's the only possible meaning of that, right? So that this is the kind of binary thinking that is unhealthy, it's uncreative, and certainly you would think someone of the caliber of Mr. Favreau, who has proven time and time again he can make quality Star Wars. He really can. And to think that that guy's like, well, I can't think of my, I, that's the only, I'm sorry, I guess the only the choice I got to go is embrace Ryan Johnson's vision, you know, and over the next 10 years as I develop the show that eventually 10, 15 years it takes to get to that point in the timeline, I can't come up with anything new that might deviate from that, right? It's only one way to do it. So that's not realistic. Uh, my view is that the more real, and if this I was the writer trying to engage the audience and get it talking, I would make the unexpected choice, which is go with the armor and have him return for season three of The Mandalorian to uh, to uh, to you know Din Djarin and and uh, as our friend Stephanie Janicek pointed out that they refitted the back where the where the astromech droid should be. There's a little space back there that could actually fit Grogu very nicely, so that could be his his gunner seat in the back. Oh yeah, right? we all picked up uh, after episode five when they when they showed that it's you, you knew that was yeah. that was and a Grogu sized pod. I and mean, so he's going to be in there for some time. But does that mean that he's never going to become Luke Skywalker's student? Uh, you know, as I think we talked about this just before we went online, this entire episode was meant to parallel the Empire Strikes Back and the training sequence with Yoda. And perhaps you can comment on what happened with Empire Strikes Back and Yoda if we actually follow the linear parallel of what happened to Luke and Yoda as student and, and teacher. Yeah, this is I've been talking back and forth with people about this all day, and it's like you said, binary is an excellent choice of words for this. I don't think it's it's an all or nothing proposition at this point, whichever way he chooses. But what struck me is, like we said, visually, the the the, the dialogue, the script, everything was a replication of Empire Strikes Back. We yes. had Luke carrying Yoda. Now we had him carrying Grogu. Luke is now the teacher, Grogu the student this time, obviously. But everything in there was was all callbacks. Well, when it came down to that choice at the end, I was like, oh, I can I can hear the people talking now. But the first thing I thought of, well, duh, because in Empire Strikes Back, what did Luke do? He had during the training, in the middle of training, quite literally, he gets distracted. He sees visions of his friends that are in trouble in Cloud City. And he tells Yoda, "I'm so, he's I, I'm sorry, I have to go." Yoda says, "But you're tra you're not ready. Your training's not finished. It's too dangerous. You have to make this choice. You can't do this right now." And he says, "Sorry, I got to bail." And he left. And he came back in Return of the Jedi. And he came back, and so yeah. So and then we we take that one more level of that. But so mm -hmm. so let's say so if we're going to follow that journey, then it seems likely if we're just going to follow into Tri Empire Strikes Back, it makes sense for Grogu to go. I'm going to leave with my training incomplete to go help my friend or be with my friend in the Jaren. And he goes off on an adventure with Ninja Jaren and learns some lessons with him over the course of another season of The Mandalorian, where people mm -hmm. buy lots of baby Grogu toys, right? And then. He comes back with those lessons learned to Luke Skywalker. Uh, and if I were wise, I would use Luke Skywalker sparingly as they are doing, right? And I, so I, I would. would. Yes. So, yeah, and I was going to yeah. say real quick, another point to this that's important to, to consider is that given where we are in the timeline, if I'm not mistaken, and I may be, yeah. we're still at least five years away, if not six or seven, from the point where Ben Solo would arrive as a 10 year old as i believe he was to the academy because i think and we don't even know if he's born yet at this, this point is five years after this is about five years five years after ROJ. Right? yeah so he's yeah. he's too young so the point is is that there there is at least probably a couple of two or three years of space here that grogu could leave and still come back and still be the and first student who had lots of adventures and sell them lots of toys yeah. on the other shows and there's yeah. a, but but the now but the other objection I, and i just talked with our, our mutual friend and mary mayhem and she you know raised a really important story objection she's like mm -hmm. you know the character of luke at the end who's who's detached and has learned to 
escape detachment isn't exactly the character we had in Return of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi, he learned to balance those things, right? You know, right. he learned not to take his attachments to an extreme where they would push him to anger and his desire to protect his sister. He almost killed his own father. Mm -hmm. But he transcended that. But he never gave up his love for his sister. It was actually his attachment to his father that made him a hero. And this is the thing. And that's the, the subtext of the final moment of Return of the Jedi when uh, Luke Skywalker is on Endor and he's looking out and he sees the ghost, the force ghost of Yoda, Obi-Wan, and his father, Anakin. They've been reunited in the afterlife. And, the, and Obi-Wan and, you know, Alec Guinness, what a great actor, is looking over at Anakin with pride. Mm -hmm. Both Obi-Wan and Yoda had given up on Anakin. They did not believe he was redeemable. And that came out of their detached analysis of the situation as a Jedi. And because Luke wasn't detached, he was able to see the truth that his father really could be salvaged and saved. And he did save him. And so there, even in the afterlife, he's taught Obi-Wan and Yoda a lesson that maybe the Jedi didn't fully understand everything because it was this obsession with attachment that led Anakin down the wrong path because they didn't give help him deal with his feelings for Padme. They didn't allow him to have a relationship with her in a healthy way. So it became an unhealthy uh, attachment, right? So yep. if one of the points, and, and and I believe it was Andrew and I was talking to Mary on the show, pointed out that, do you remember there was a line in last night's episode where Ahsoka says, sometimes a student teaches the teacher. So maybe that is the journey where where Grogu will come back, will go on an adventure, disappoint mm -hmm. Luke. Oh, I guess you're going to leave me here. And, and I guess I failed as a teacher, right? You didn't stick around. And then come back and teach Luke. Hey, don't you remember? You, you don't have to bind all the Jedi stuff. You can find the truth of it. In the same way that Cobra Kai, after several seasons, got to the place where Daniel could accept that maybe he could learn something from Cobra Kai. Maybe Mr. Miyagi didn't have all the answers. And you need to get the character there over time. And you need someone else to teach that to him. And so, right. yes, Obi-Wan's not around. You know, Osoko's not really in a training relationship with him. It's only in that student-teacher relationship that you can learn these things. So maybe Grogu goes away for a season or two seasons and comes back. And maybe he can show Luke look, I found a way to balance the force of my attachments and my friendships and the people I love and doing what is right. You don't have to have either or, right? And that's a lesson that Luke should have in his heart and needs to maybe be revealed to him, that you already knew this. You aren't actually- the I was going to say, you were reminded of it. Well, you, learned, yeah, you learned this already. You're actually more gray Jedi like Ahsoka is. You learned what the Jedi didn't understand. That's why they were destroyed. The force balanced them out. Remember, the force chose Anakin because the Jedi- were no were corrupt as we saw the Jedi weren't great guys they hurt Ahsoka did a lot of bad things right and the force wiped them out because they were too extreme in their own ideology so the return to the center the balance is the wisdom of balancing the light and the dark which is the Taoist symbol so I think that people should not freak out they will freak out but they should not freak out if as is likely he will choose the male and go off you know that doesn't mean we're going to end up with hermit angry TLJ. You know, Luke, last Jedi Luke trying to kill his nephew for no reason. Is well, that, that's that's the part where it went off the rails, and I I can't I can't see it going back there. And just to something you said, you know about you know the force kind of chose yeah. and balanced it out, and I, I think in. in there, there was a line in Revenge of the Sith, you know, basically Yoda lamenting, how could we have been so blind or something, or, you know, we, we haven't been able to see this, how has it been shrouded from us? And it's it's because I think there was some complacency, maybe not corruption, but maybe some complacency. Yeah, they're lazy. The they got lazy. They got, yeah. they, got a little, they got a little arrogant. They but, got a little assumption. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. But I mean, look, th th at the end of the day, I think the, the answer could be even something more simple. I think you could see Grogu let's say he chooses the armor and 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 Luke brings him back. Now, here's the thing, and this is why I'm a little skeptical about this happening in the last episode. It's too much because if, we, if we're going to have Han Solo show up, which yeah. at this point... It seems likely. 99.99% going to happen, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, Han Solo and Chewie are going to show up. I don't think... I mean, to put Luke in there and everything else, it's this is that's something I think they want to save as much as I'd love to see it in the last episode. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen Luke. We've seen Han. We're just not going to see him together. I yeah, don't think, we want to hold a little bit. You got you want yeah. the Easter egg. Meaning, that's so fine. that's why I'm a little skeptical about whether this is even going to happen in the next episode. Yeah, um, let have people debate for a year over. And this. I think I think <laughs> if anything, maybe there's a final shot of him grabbing the armor. But again, it doesn't. It, it there's still time. Is that it doesn't make it. And look, the thing with the sequel trilogy. This is this is my issue. 
Mm -hmm. This is the bottom line. What were the two biggest complaints with the sequel trilogy? Mm -hmm. It was the treatment and the, quote, deconstruction by Ryan Johnson of Luke mm -hmm. Skywalker, which was atrocious and just mm -hmm. flat stupid. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's it just, bad just, writing. It just made no terrible sense writing. It made no sense. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, it was the destruction of the Skywalker legacy by having Palpatine yeah. survive. And basically, mm -hmm. the sacrifices of Luke and Anakin were all for naught. Yeah, his and lineage continues. Ray, yes. Ray was the big hero, but was really a Palpatine clone granddaughter. Whatever. I don't give it crap. It was stupid. That's Here's the thing. You can have all this stuff that looks like the sequel trilogy. Like you can, you can talk about the first order. We know we're getting Thrawn. They're gonna plug in some first order references. You can even do Snoke for all I care. That doesn't matter. The the complaints, if we all really think about it, were what they did to Luke, and that's what has to really be changed. Is you can't have Palpatine coming back and then ha or and or having the Skywalker legacy negated by having this Ray character show up. So if you get rid of Palpatine, you get rid of Ray because without Palpatine, you can't make Ray. Yeah. Um, that's number one. And you can't do this thing with Luke. If WDW pro, if the information that he's getting from people that he knows at Lucasfilm and Disney, which have been quite often, very correct in the mm -hmm. past, um, then everything going forward with star Wars is going to centrally focus around Grogu. And if the argument for the sequel trilogy people are, well, at some point, of course, Ben is going to have to kill Grogu or Grogu is going to have to disappear. Grogu is a Disney cash register and why he is going to keep away? being a Disney cash register. Yeah. That's why he's in this show. That's yeah. why this show went back to Grogu. That's why every Mando season three is going to focus on that kind of stuff. Um, all of that is going to continue. So. They're not going to kill him or let Ben Solo kill him. Um, somebody was saying today about the Jedi Academy. Oh, well, they brought that back from the sequel trilogy. I'm like, dude, the Jedi Academy was around since, I think, 1990-something yeah, in yeah. the books. And, and if I so, am John Favreau, I'm going to have a lot. And, and I've heard from my friends who are in his crew who said John Favreau doesn't like The Last Jedi. He didn't share its vision. He didn't yeah. like it. And if that is true, and I believe it to be true because these fr people, mutual friends, know John well. If that's true, and I believe that to be true based on the choices John has made with story, then that that's a little, you know, subtle screw you to, to Ryan Johnson to build up the temple with the same little design and then take it in a completely different storyline. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And and that's that's just it. So, I mean, whatever whatever Grogu's decision is, it's 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 it'll be interesting to talk about. But I'm not going to sit here and say one way or the other. Because I'm not, con you know. I think we're definitely going to see some changes. It's how far down the road do we go with this? But again, oh. you know, every, every time we see a reference to something that was in a sequel trilogy film does not necessarily mean that everything is going to happen in the same manner. And to me, I can't speak for anybody else, but yeah. for me, that's what's most important is that those certain events do not take place. And at this point, you can change the Han Solo thing too because you don't even need Harrison Ford since he doesn't want to play the role anymore. That's why he was killed off in the first movie. Um, he didn't really want to do it. Um, but you can you can change that to where he's not a deadbeat dad anymore and just you know go on where he and Leia stay married. I mean, they can, they can do all this. There's ways to make it work. And again, it, for me, as I've always said, this isn't about, this isn't a fandom issue for me. Mm -hmm. This is about money. This yeah. is about business. So that's and not when Disney knows I can make money if I go do this, they're going to go do it. They can't set the, the sequel trilogy is dead. There is no more revenue to be made from and that. There, and nobody bought the toys from it. Nobody went off and bought the merch was a mess. toys. And yeah. so that's, People were arguing with you, well, they can't retcon it because there's loyal fans. So it's like, what loyal fans? The people that wouldn't buy the Rose Tico toys, the the ones that, that have all the, you know, that that wouldn't buy the the, the toys for, for Kylo Ren? Mm -hmm. What loyal fans? The only loyalty that matters is are you spending your money? You're not spending your money. So your words on Twitter don't mean anything. Right. Like, no, they're, no, they're spending that. their money on Grogu. They're spending their money on Mando yeah. merch. That's what's bringing it in, and so that 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 little baby Yoda kid, he, he is he is protected on high. He is never going to be killed in a Star Wars show or made to disappear again. Cash and, machine. And he can live till nine hundred years old, and yeah. so and so. But I want to bring that back to the central thing, which people don't seem to grasp. There is no profit. There is no revenue stream in returning the timeline to the last Jedi fake trilogy world. 
there is that means making lots of money and then one day we just decided we don't want to make any more money we want to burn it all that does not make rational sense no. this trilogy was greenlit by deluded people who thought it was going to bring them billions of dollars that they thought they were going to deconstruct this character for a new generation that that had all kinds of political agendas and wouldn't appreciate the old characters they were wrong about yeah, that billions of dollars in profit let's let's i don't want to get comments on well it made five billion in grosses yeah. that's not Profit, and and it didn't make what was projected because, as I've said, I saw Wall Street analyst projections in 2012 that the sequel trilogy was supposed to go this way. They expected yeah. first movie would make two billion, second would be 2.5, and the third would be three. Instead, it was two billion, which they were right on because nobody knew what it was going to be, so I was going to go see it. The second one, they when they saw the second one, it dropped to one half of the projection, 1.3 billion, and then it dropped to one third of the projection, 1 billion. That is not the direction Wall Street wanted. No. That wasn't doesn't help them make it profitable. So there is no profitability in going back to a failed experiment, which is that was what it was. And so mm -hmm. the idea that, well, no, they're, 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 they have to go. 15 years from now, John Favreau and Dave Filoni in the 2030s will be like, well, we've got to honor what Ryan Johnson did. So I know I know this has been making us a lot of money, but it's time to just pull the plug. And, and I mean, it doesn't make any sense if you have years away from that timeline to go anywhere you want, to use the veil of the force, to use whatever you want, or to simply say nobody even remembers those dumb movies. We're just going to act like they never happened, and we're going to go down a different storyline and even not address it. You mm -hmm. can just do that because there's not enough people who are paying money for those things to fight for it. They're yeah. not. There's no rational economic reason to do this. And people have to understand, these movies were greenlit under a deluded economic premise. They really believed they were going to make profit on this. They were wrong. Now that it has been proven to be wrong, there is no reason to go back to it. And the idea that they have some kind of emotional commitment to Ryan Johnson's vision is madness. And I hear this stuff, I'm like, are you guys mentally ill? I mean, that makes no sense. I understand why Kathleen Kennedy deluded herself in believing that deconstructing Luke Skywalker was going to be profitable because she read read the tea leaves of culture that the white male is out because she's on Twitter all day long hearing people saying white male is out, white male is out. We want gender this and gender that. And she said, well, that's where culture is. So I'm going to give that to them. That wasn't where culture was. That's where a small section of society was talking in a bubble to itself. And so they misread where the culture was. Mm -hmm. And now they got the economic return from that. They've learned. It It doesn't make any sense. And if that's the case, then just set fire to Star Wars right now. Why bother yeah. to even make good episodes like the one we saw? It makes no sense. And people need to start returning to sanity here. Well, they, they have, you know, they uh, Favreau has a plan. He, again, we've talked about this before. Absolutely, um, he does. Just to kind of bring things home. And, and it's, yeah. it's you, you know... They brought him in because he's the guy that was the architect for the MCU, starting with Iron Man. They expected this same thing to happen at Star Wars. It didn't. Mm -hmm. uh, they're trying to fix that now. The trajectory has changed a little bit, only in the sense that, of course, in 2012 and even 2015, the notion of Disney Plus was not even there. Yeah. So a lot of this has now shifted to lead Disney Plus off. Again, it's 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 they're trying to get that they're trying to get that arm of Disney to profitability. They're still two to three years away from making Disney Plus turn a profit. They have to keep putting these shows on there to do that because they don't have a whole lot else in terms of new content. The library that they have there has been keeping people. But the point is this. For every piece of story, and you know I mean, and I'm not talking about nitpicky little stuff, but I'm talking about like Grogu selects the armor yep. kind of thing. Um, you're 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 going to scare more people away that are hanging by a thread, mm -hmm. you know, with the hope that this is going to get better. But the more the more things that happen, and I'm talking about the deep seated stuff, not just mm -hmm. oh that looks like the same Jedi Academy thing as what yeah. they had in the movies. Fine, I don't that that part does not bother me. But if we start seeing Luke act like he's changing for the for the worse uh if we start seeing things like uh you know other character hints or you know we see han and leia get a divorce or something like that yeah and, he, and, and he abandons ben 
then you can start yeah, flipping and, out. Because that's not what the audience wants. And then the audience is going to go. At that point, yeah. it's totally dead. It's over. Nobody wants to see you know Han and Leia hating each other. Nobody wants to. Nobody wants to see him being a bad dad. Nobody wants to see that, right? That's not no. what the audience wants. They're going to they're going to shut it off, and the revenue stream is going to stop. And again, going back to Luke. The character that we saw last night, now people are critiquing, well, he's so emotionally detached and Luke should be more, a little more centered than that. I was like, well, here's this. Emotionally detached? Can you see that emotionally detached, zen-centered dude randomly decided to kill his nephew because the guy's having a bad dream? Does, does that does that character go from the one you saw last night? Can you ever yeah. see that character getting there? It doesn't make any sense. So the very critique that people are giving takes away the critique that they have that this is going to lead to Last Jedi. This character, Mr. Zen, you know, dude, Japanese, you know, you, you know, Zen figure sitting there cannot become that guy. You can't get the character there. I mean, yeah, they'd have to come up with the most ridiculous level of trauma or something. But I mean, I just... And how does and, he run a school? It doesn't make any sense. And, and again, and that's why I said that I, you know, the whole it happened because he had a bad dream, BS. And the only thing said, well, and I've seen people say this, and I'll reiterate this as a closing point. Yes. Well, what's going to drive him over the edge is, you know, because it, it Grogu's going to get killed. I mean, Ben Solo's going to have to kill him. That's going to be the one that he's going to have to go after, or something like that. And that's what that's what's going to turn Luke, uh, or he's going to have. They are not going to kill Grogu. He is a damn cash machine. Dis That's like Bob Tapex saying. Can Disney we have might have, there come? might be an episode where they're going to fake you out like yeah. he's yeah, dead. He's gone. Yeah. He and he's coming. I, I just, I'm telling you. They I, might I, put Grogu in Carbonite for an episode. Okay. Grogu you know. is worth billions of dollars to them over the next several years. That's what they see right now. It, it because be like you look at the reactions on YouTube today that people had yeah. when, when, when he, and I've been watching a few of them sporadically mm -hmm. today. Anna, that Star Wars girl, yes. 18 straight minutes, and that was edited down, 18 minutes of her squealing in excitement yeah. during the whole episode. And I'm like, I'm just sitting there smiling and laughing. I had it on. I was like, I couldn't and believe Anna's it. Anna's not it was, afraid to criticize was, Star no. Wars. She's not afraid to criticize it. She's not. And, and it's like, I'm not trying to pick on you, Anna, right now. I'm sorry. Yeah, if we, I'm, we, you we know, love the channel. got to use you as an example. But no, I love the video. But that's the kind of thing I'm talking about is that those reactions is which driving the financial decisions right now. That is it. You cannot touch that character, and and it's it, it is it is it is the sacred money cow at Disney right now. It would be like Bob Chapek telling people, you telling John Favreau, can you just uh, hire an arsonist and set fire to my house while I and my family are still in it? it it's not something they're going to do. It's not. Yeah. There's no incentive to do this. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. No. Uh, it, here's the bottom line, folks. We got to be patient. We're not going to take one little thing here and there and say and that, oh, it's all going to be just like this in the end. Look, there will be it, it might, twists. it yeah. could, it might happen. It could happen. Sure. I don't think we're there yet. I don't think, I, I really it, don't. It and again, at the end of the day, all... I'm looking at this purely from a business perspective. It, it, look, it's, it's, and there will be surprise twists because that's good storytelling. Yeah. I feel like watching some of the reactions from what I call the Black Pillars to a wonderful episode last night, trying to find fault with it and saying this and that, and this is going to lead to The Last Jedi. I was like, these are the people that would have sat in the audience at Empire Strikes Back and go, well, this franchise is over. Let's look at it. Han Solo's, <laughs> you know, the bad guys won. Han Solo's in Carbonite. Luke's had his hand chopped off. Bad guy's his dad. There's no way coming back from that. You know, it's all, it's, it's over. It's what a garbage. Have you ever thought there might be a subsequent surprise twist to all of these storylines? That's what good writing is. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we're going to see a lot of red herrings, folks, in, yeah. the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the coming shows. I really because do. Because they want so. you emotionally engaged, which is what twists do. Last exactly. night was a surprise. It was yep. a surprise to me. And now there will be other surprises that are making go, oh, my God, where are they going to go from this? I'm scared now. It's good if you're scared. You know, you weren't scared in The Last Jedi. I watched that movie. I It's hard to keep your eyes open because nothing happens. There's no emotional engagement. And None. this is – you don't care about these people. You don't care. Luke is somebody that you don't – because you don't recognize him. You don't care about him for the first time you see him throw that slideshow. You don't care. You're not invested. The reason people are arguing about this is they're now invested in Grogu making a choice. That's good writing. And if yeah. you can't see that that's good writing, you, you're living on another planet. Yeah. I mean, pe yeah, it, it was exactly what you just said. When it came to The Last Jedi, I mean, that was B2. I mean, I remember watching that. And then the minute he flipped that lightsaber, I was kind of like, huh, wait, what? 
And after that, it was all downhill. I mean, I was I was largely emotionally detached from the movie after that, just because I had I never got so. I never got excited in the movie. I never got on the edge of my seat. What's going to happen? I just got increasingly the sense of being buried alive. Right. <laughs> I mean, no matter what twists happened, I just you know when Snoke got killed, none of it. I was like more like someone is burying me alive step by step. I can't do I- it. There was everything about that movie was just a what the hell is this and what am I watching even and and again the shelf life of it bore out in the in this in the sales after the fact that the the Blu-ray DVD sales dropped precipitously off from the first film and the last film of course was was even worse uh, and, and then of course the other things like Solo and things we've talked about before but I mean that that's it that's where we're at and all this is academic for right now until next week when episode seven comes out and I've got uh, just as a preview. Uh, a couple of friends like Echo Base and some other folks hopefully be joining me, uh, some Star Wars YouTube channels uh, to come in and kind of just share their fan thoughts on it. So we'll probably be doing that next week. Uh, stay tuned for that. And tomorrow, our one-year anniversary live stream. Check it out, 6 p.m. Yeah. Central Standard Time. Uh, Cameron, I got to send you a link because I just realized yeah, you're not on Twitter. Yeah, I should be able to come join that for a little okay, bit. Okay, good. <laughs> it's like, I was like, I don't think I sent Cameron anything because he's no, not on Twitter. Be, you mentioned you were going to do it, but, I, but I'd be delighted. Yeah, I'm not on Twitter. I haven't set it up yet. I'll send it to you tomorrow. So anyway, folks, it's good to see everybody. Cameron, appreciate you being here. It's fun as always, and we'll try to keep doing these every week. People seem to keep loving them, and uh, make sure you check out Cameron Pasha on Patreon. We'll leave Please a link do. in the description below, and until next time, take care.